thing actually, so it doesn't completely light on fire like it almost did. Uh, <laughs> I like back my chair up into the heat area. Yeah. The last time I do that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so um, hopefully we'll get a chance to workshop uh, a couple things uh, or a couple different businesses today. Um, this week's workshop is broken down into five sections, and um, the uh, idea behind it is that there, it's kind of like, I don't know, there's no one thing that you need to get done in order to figure out how to price your item or in order to price it correctly. Uh, and so these are all just a bunch of different areas that I think uh, deserve a little thought. Um, and uh, all of the little uh, bullet points within those are just kind of exercises to uh, get your gears turning and uh, maybe hammer out a little more concretely what you want from your pricing and some ideas that'll um, develop your strategies. Uh, before I get into that, I guess um, any questions that you guys had um, before we get into the workshop section about anything that we uh, that we talked about before, or anything you were just like that made no sense. Awesome. Uh, great. That's perfect. Um, in that case, yeah, let's hop straight into uh, doing some uh, doing some workshopping. And. Um, yeah, if you want to talk a little bit about your idea, just kind of introduce yourself um, to okay. everyone for the... You're talking about my business, right? Yeah, yeah, my exactly, business. yeah. Okay. Um, I'm Akiko Oguchi, and I have a business called Fifth Season, where I design and make upcycled handbags. And most of my material comes from McMinimins, um, coffee burlap sacks, and cotton scraps, and zippers, and buttons from scrap, and various donations from my customers and friends. Um, and I've been in business for a little over a year. I moved out to Portland last January and started this full time. And pricing is definitely something that I'm kind of like, I don't really know. I'm charging <coughs> myself, or I'm trying to get 15 an hour. And I think it's pretty okay with the pricing right now because the material's pretty, it's all free pretty much. Um, and so it's just my labor costs and yeah, that's about it. And I, yeah, I would love to get coaching <laughs> on pricing. Awesome, that's great. Um, any questions just about uh, the business in general? Um, or the uh, upcycle handbags? Yeah, what do you, um, like how do you try to sell them? Are you trying to go into stores and have them be in there? Yeah, I mostly sell on Etsy and then I have wholesale accounts and consignment um, in about eight different shops in Portland. And last year I was busy doing a lot of um, street fairs and this year I'm trying, I'm gonna not do it just because it wasn't very successful. It just felt like a lot of time and effort went into it and I did make a lot of sales and it was kind of annoying. So um, I'm sticking to online. Ideally it would all be online and maybe a couple like wholesale accounts but I'm not digging the consignment either. So online and wholesale is what I really want. Nice. And um, what's your current prices, or what do you charge right now? Um, my lowest point is twelve dollars for low coin purses, and the highest is hundred and twenty for diaper bags. For what? For diaper bags. Diaper bags. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I have a quick question. What is? I mean, I kind of know, but what is Etsy? Tell me a little bit more about how that works. Etsy is a huge website, um, and it has over I don't even know a hundred thousand vendors, artists. And they're all handmade or vintage. I forget what the requirements are. Um, but they're mostly handmade artists who sell their stuff online. They have a pretty large base of customers. Huge, yeah. Yeah, kind of like so the eBay stores for artists. And like yeah, it's kind of yeah. It's yeah. pretty universal. It's them. really oversaturated, though. Like, once you get in there, it's really difficult for customers to see your stuff. Unless, I feel like unless they're going there and looking up fifth season really difficult for you know if you if you do a search for upcycled bags there's like thousands and people aren't going to wade through all of them to like find my bag so that's yeah. also kind of annoying and so i'm thinking about going into big cartel which i which i hear is pretty good with seo like it's better than etsy and it's not as oversaturated and you can personalize the website or personalize your page better so oh, nice yeah um all right so um uh, any other questions, I guess, before we launch into uh, some workshopping? Okay. Um, great. So which one of these, uh, which one of these do you work on, want to work on um, out of these five um, for right now? Um, let's 
stabilizing income? Sure. Yeah, that's a really good one. Okay. Um, because <clears throat> that one's maybe like the least apparent, and we spent a lot of the like yeah least amount of time talking about it too. Um, Okay, so the idea behind this one is just making it so that you're reliant not on um, as many one-off sales and on people uh, yeah, going and finding your stuff and just buying one of them and then forgetting about it, but on mm -hmm. um, um, kind of trying to make uh, recurring um, customers mm -hmm. out of them. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what that could look like, I guess. Um, what... Um, so right now, that's 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 um, pretty much all you sell is the bags that come from like little purse bags up to varying sizes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, what's your best selling item, or what do you sell the most of? Um, they're called Leah tote bags. They're they're just regular tote bags with a little button hook, um, and people use it for farmers market or taking it to the beach or for school bags. It's kind of versatile and it's like pretty simple. Mm -hmm. like a tote bag. What's that? Like a tote bag. Almost. Yeah, it's just like a tote bag. And I think it's popular just because it's been featured on, what's that magazine? Like Mix Magazine, Mix Portland Magazine mm -hmm. or something. And it's like, it's it's had the most press because um, it's simple compared to all the other ones with like, there's other ones that have like lace and pleats and stuff. And this is like the one that people go for. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, so let's talk about, so um, this is a really interesting one, which will make it fun to tear apart a little bit. Um, yeah, uh, just because uh, unlike a service or getting a massage or something like that, like memberships um, make a lot less sense. Um, and unlike something like a, yeah, a t-shirt of the month club or an artwork of the month club, it's like, well, you probably only need like, you probably don't need a dozen messenger bags, um, which makes it an interesting one for that. Um, so, and you know, you probably don't need as much maintenance on your bags, like people aren't coming to you to like repair their bags every month or something like that. So it creates less of a cycle for that. Um, throwing events around um, handmade bags is not the best uh, the best idea. Uh, maybe I don't know. Maybe it's awesome. Maybe you could do it. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe some kind like of like for like a horror party. <laughs> totally. Um, which um, which is interesting. Which means that uh, to me it means that the bags should probably like when we're thinking about creating some kind of other stable income mm -hmm. uh, like that that is really consistent. Um, that we'll probably need to do it in some kind of auxiliary or ancillary um, way, as opposed to straight through um, these kind of upcycled bags. Um, is my initial thoughts on it. So uh, let's talk about other extras that could go along with the bags, or other things that you're generating along with your bag, uh, with the bag business. And um, what's the name of it again? I, I forget. Everybody okay in here? Well, um, Estella. Estella? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> I have another idea. Another idea. Awesome. And what was the name of your business again? Fifth Season. Fifth Season, that's right. Um, yeah, Fifth Season. Uh, so, um, yeah, let's talk about what else is going on? So, I mean, you said that these more generic bags are kind of your best-selling ones. Mm -hmm. um, do you do any, like, accessories to them, or do they have any decorations on them, or what's your...? They do, and I do custom orders. I prefer custom orders when people send me their fabric, because um, ideally, everything would be custom order. Um, if people have sentimental, clo like, clothing or fabric with sentimental values, and they're just, like, laying around, like, I have customers sending me um, their grandfather's jeans, and they want them want them made into something that they can use every day. Um, their grandmother's it's handkerchief, awesome. and it's yeah. like oh, I don't use handkerchiefs, but if you turn it into a you know coin purse, I'll use it, and I'll remember my grandmother. Mm -hmm. Things like that. Um, way prefer that over like making just pumping out bags after bags after bags. Um, totally, that's a really good call. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, a random thought. Uh, it also like would be awesome. I mean, there's a lot of. Um, places around that have a lot of sentimental value to people too. Like figuring out a story that goes along with like almost any of your recycled clothing would be really interesting. Mm -hmm. Almost like, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean this came from like, hey friends of chefs who worked at this restaurant that shut down last year. Or, from yeah. a hotel yeah. that got demolished or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I kind of remember, anyway, that was just a random thought that popped in my head. But um, okay, so that's, so yeah, custom orders is good. Do you do, um, so yeah, people just send you your scraps or their scraps, mm -hmm. and then you yeah make something out of it. That's mm -hmm. awesome. That's mm -hmm. like yeah, that's the kind of custom thing is way more interesting to me than just the like yeah, yeah kind of like having the customer in mind is really interesting. More inspirational. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, so then there's the actual um, act of making these things mm -hmm. as well. 
Um, what goes into that? Like, how often do you change designs or do different um, designs? Or I've been adding a new design about every other month or so. Oh wow. Um, and it's been getting bigger and then now I'm at the point where I feel like I should just shrink it down and like focus uh -huh. on maybe the Leah tote bags that sell really well or like the point purses and there's like three top selling things and so I'm thinking about just sticking to those and then doing more custom with the other designs or something. Yeah, yeah. I kind of just want to streamline it because there are bags where I'm not really making profit because it's other bags are intricate and it takes a lot more time and I don't really feel like charging a hundred dollars per handbag. I don't think it'll sell. Is that uh -huh. Kind of like I'm not, so that's the tricky part. Like maybe just cutting out the more intricate bags. Or yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, mm -hmm. And a pricing strategy in general, not directly related to this like um, recurring payment one, mm -hmm. is um, yeah. I mean, I definitely think that's a good idea. Is cutting down to just a few items that mm -hmm. are your best selling ones, mm -hmm. and then doing yeah custom work and using those as a lead into like mm -hmm. get people interested about the custom stuff. Mm -hmm. Especially if that's what you want to be doing. And to me, that sounds like yeah, really the most interesting part of this. Um, so. I mean, yeah, the, uh, so what I'm trying to think of is like, what can go into um, something like this that someone would want to be changing it out or would want something new that belongs to it on a regular basis? Um, the two that pop to my head immediately are some kind of um, decoration or addition or something that can be added on or changed um, to it. I mean, even some kind of like, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, embellishment or something that gets sent out on a regular basis, um, or actually like teaching um, the process of making these bags, yeah. slash sending out little like um, scrap care kits almost. Like if you had like you're adding new product lines or new um, products and actually making new things, yeah. um, selling the process that you use to make them and kind of doing a like do your do it yourself kit of um, scrap with like two zippers and like this much fabric and sending it out as you design new things. And it's like every two months someone just gets their own little like uh -huh. do it yourself kit. Um, is another thing that popped into my head. So that's kind of just like taking the process itself <coughs> and putting it into a product or yeah, figuring out an accessory. Um, any other thoughts that you guys have? Is your, is your site fifthseasondesign.com? What's up? Is your site fifthseasondesign.com? Mm -hmm. uh, if you're, like you're saying you want to do custom stuff, I think one of your top many things should just be custom. Mm -hmm. Like I don't see anywhere on your site that I can order custom yeah, things. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Because I could totally get rid of the donation tab. Are you on my site right now? Yeah, or, okay. <laughs> okay, awesome. I'll do that. Yeah, technology. Okay, that's really cool. You should definitely like focus a lot I on like it. I like them. Oh, it'd be so easy to market that too. And I also wonder like if you're selling on Etsy, you can say, 10% off your first custom order if you get this bag over 25 bucks. Ooh! Oh! Nice. That's a really good idea. Mm -hmm. Wait, if you get it with another bag? Like okay. if you order off Etsy, say 10% off your first custom order from me, or whatever, like to kind of funnel oh, I see. people into doing that. Got it. Or just to check out the fact that you do custom mm -hmm. stuff and then show examples of it. Yeah, yeah. You can put some pictures of some of your fancier bags in the in the custom section, maybe, so mm -hmm. that they can see the quality of work that you can do, mm -hmm. and then keep keep your basics. Yeah, on so the website. You're talking about like people, you know, grandfather's jeans, mm -hmm. things yeah. like that, that will like make people realize they have things around their house. Oh, perfect. That they might want yeah. to turn into bags. Perfect for wedding gifts. I'm yeah. thinking like grandma's seventy yeah. fifth birthday, mm -hmm. or parents. <laughs> Or like a big anniversary yeah. or something like totally going off to college presents. Oh um, yeah, yes. you know things like that. Use some of their baby clothes yeah. and make it into something. They can take a, a little piece of home with them. Totally. Oh, yeah. I think oh that's yeah. Great. Yeah. Gathering some stuff from from grandma's kids that you can put together and make grandma a bag that they can give to her for her birthday. Like oh yeah, totally. Yeah, just totally soft. Yeah, I mean, so maybe yeah. your like form of stabilizing income really is more like um, trying to get these recurring sales and getting people to do the custom orders and really mm -hmm. trying to encourage like spreading the word about custom orders. Like a nice stable stabilization might be more like encouraging word of mouth rather than trying to sell mm -hmm. um, any like sort of recurring payment um, type thing. Just making sure that yeah. But people feel like orders. they're not just buying a bag; they're they're solidifying a piece of their their history and their memories. Yeah. Oh my gosh. 
you could do some sort of a referral discount too, or if you um, give one of your friends to buy a bag, you get 10% off your next purchase, or if you're referring to buy somebody you. who already has a handbag. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. And that's something would tell your friends. It seems like <coughs> what's your main source of advertisement? Mm -hmm. Word of mouth, or um, you said you had a hard time getting uh, exposure on Etsy. Yeah, and I'm on Twitter. Like I just started using, becoming more active on Twitter like two days ago. And Facebook, I've been using off and on, but I feel like I don't know how many people I'm reaching through at, through Facebook, and so. Just word of mouth, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I kind of want to get better on you know with the social media stuff, but I guess that's a whole different. Thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, we'll have plenty of time to talk about that <laughs> yeah. for sure. Yeah, it's what I do for a living, so I definitely have a few. <laughs> okay. um, no, that's good. So yeah, um, so maybe we should actually. So let's steer away from the the stabilizing income one because it seems like analyzing it, it's like there's not a lot of room for a lot of recurring things. Um, if you can figure out ways to build it in, I mean, that's still a really great thing to think about as you keep going, like accessories or something where you can mm -hmm. just do a, like oh, have them yeah. get, be getting something on a regular basis that makes sense for it. Unless we look at reoccurring income as focusing on your wholesale market and constantly pumping out for stores and so forth. I mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let's talk about uh, maybe a little bit of anchors, decoys, and snares um, with this one. Because it sounds yes. like if you're getting down to like three items plus um, custom, mm -hmm. well, those four price points are going to be a really good yeah. thing to look at. Um, so which, uh, which were the three that you were going to think about selling, or what, are you, what were your best three selling? Okay, bags? Leotope bags, those are $55. Mm -hmm. And uh, the coin purses, mini Maggies are 12 and then the wristlets are 36. And then the wristlets are 36. Mm. Wristlets. What is a wristlet? <coughs> wristlet, like a it's a little bag and it has a little strap so you can put it around your wrist. Kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, like so you can hold on to it and yeah. It's pretty popular, like a clutch I guess. Bag kind <laughs> I don't use it myself, but girls like it. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Um, which ones of those do you want to sell the most of, or what do you really want people to come away with? The Leah bags, the Leah tote bags. Okay, so the the larger, the yeah. more expensive one. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, that seems like a good uh, place. I mean, already that that pricing breakdown is already kind of nice, which is like really convenient. Like if you just um, make sure to list them in that descending order, like starting with the did you say fifty six dollars? Fifty five, yeah. Yeah, fifty five, then going down to the forty something. Thirty six. Thirty six, twelve. And the twelve, yeah. And the twelve is so far below the other ones. That's like a really nice lower price for it. They're like, oh, I really like your stuff, but like, yeah, twelve dollars is totally reasonable for if you're starting mm -hmm. up at the like fifty six price range, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. um, and then what do your custom orders start at? Custom is the same price plus 20%. Oh, that's not even like, yeah, too insane. Is that too all. cheap? Um, I mean, well, how much time does it go into it? I mean, is it worth your time? It's the same, it's or? the same amount of time. I mean, as other bags, except for if they're sending me, you know, they, they kind of send me awkward fabric. And so it takes a little bit more time, like to figure it out, and then you know the time that I'm emailing back and forth and like designing it. Um, that might be a really good thing to um, to test out some different prices on, okay. and see what um, what people are willing to pay for that. Because um, yeah, the uh, the custom stuff does sound once again like a more interesting thing mm -hmm. to me. Um, and twenty percent sounds also like incredibly reasonable for like an amount to pay on top of that. Mm -hmm. Like there's no way I would like even think about getting the regular bag at that rate. I'd just be like, yes, yeah. custom. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, right. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, which, yeah, means also if you're not getting enough custom orders in that you're totally not, like, advertising that hard enough, because, like, yeah, that's such a good proposition. It's very good. Yeah. Um, okay, so um, one thing you could do is, uh, so let's just go through the, the actual worksheet. So um, high-priced package or option will you offer um, to anchor people? So there's the $55 bag. Um, there's also your custom prices, which you can say what price that actually starts at. Um, in this case, it would start at, um, you know, just 20% above the purse orders or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's less of a good, um, what was that? 66. Yeah, yeah, 66. Um, yeah, you can do that too. So um, I mean, one way of anchoring them as well is to list just actually the custom price above mm -hmm. the regular price for each one of them, because that'll make the regular price also seem cheaper, mm -hmm. slash the custom price seem more effective. Mm -hmm. So like starting with yeah, the like 66 down to um, 
or plus twenty percent, so yeah, seventy-seven or something would be like 50, yeah, sixty-six. Yeah, so it'd be or, uh, a bundle for like all three of them. If you think they would go well together, yeah, like, a little matching. Oh yeah, yeah. Coin inside yeah. the bag and everything. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah, that's not a bad idea too. And you can make the bundle. You like you could even raise the prices of um, your things in general and do that tactic of like the um, uh, overall handbag plus the coin purse is just like two dollars more or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but raise the price of the overall. Um, bag, so it's like you know the bag is yeah bag and coin purse seem to go really well together yeah bag is yeah. bag is fifty seven bag plus coin purse is like sixty two or something like that sixty dollars so it's just like a little bit extra for wait for the bundle it's cheaper than the two original prices put together yeah exactly okay. so raise yeah. in your original price or yeah, prices so when you bundle it it's kind of like it's oh like a I, see. Price. I see yeah I'd like raise the price of the bag just like a few dollars and then bundle in the other thing for like really cheap. So you're bundling it to what your current price it is. Pretty Close much. Yeah. Or, yeah, a little closer. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's all really good. Um, the custom work, too, I mean, if your um, goal is to, like, um, the more you charge for custom work, mm -hmm. um, the more it'll make your other stuff seem like a really good deal. Right. As well. And make yeah. you seem, like, really professional, because custom work, theoretically, should take, like, a lot more time, even though it doesn't really. Like when people hear custom, <laughs> they're like, you know, like, oh, like crazy, like. I guess actually of. it does take more time because if it's not custom, I can make like five bags at a time and it's much more efficient. Whereas if I'm making just one at a time, it's. Yeah, so there you go. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, the more you even just do like custom work starting at mm -hmm. whatever it is, like, you know, $80 for like the bag or, you know, starting at $100 for like the bigger bag or whatever you want to. So going back really quickly, I just looked on the chat for live stream. Ian brought up for reoccurring costs, teaching people how to do the bags. So having classes and making them while others learn. Nice. While you're yeah, doing yeah. It. yeah. Totally. Okay. Thanks, Ian. Thank you, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. Um, I love the future. Uh, yeah, what option can you add an upgrade onto without raising the price considerably? So that's like the handbag adding on a little like, mm -hmm. yeah, bundle option is great. Um, do you want to use any loss leaders to bring people into you? So stuff that's going to take more time, but something that's maybe just like a little $3 trinket or something like that that you would like is really cool to get people to even pay attention to your store. Um, I haven't really put much thought into that. So I, I guess it's an off. Yeah, I could. Um, and it's not necessarily like you, um, you need to or you want to. And something that takes a lot of your time service-wise is not necessarily the best thing to, because mm -hmm. it just takes a lot of time to mm -hmm. toss out into something else to test. Um, yeah, same, but, same thing, yeah, along with Boss Leader, like offering something for free as well. Like if you want to just have a blog post where you write about getting recycled materials or different interesting places to gather materials or mm -hmm. like... Um, yeah, do you do any, do you, do you currently do any kind of outward education with um, with what you do or with the recycled? I, or? I want to, but no, I haven't done any. Yeah, that might be a nice thing to like provide for free. Um, anything else you guys can think of that's just like a nice um, option to provide for like low cost or free that would kind of go along with the uh, upcycled clothing or? Like the design prints that you use? If you do want to like put that stuff out there. Like the the um, stitching like patterns. Like the pattern. yeah, patterns. Patterns, yeah. yeah. Um. Okay. Like blogging about them and. Yeah. Or I mean, you could theoretically even like sell them if you want. Right. So yeah, a lot of people sell patterns, especially on Etsy. You know, yeah. So that could be sort of like the lower cost. Like what? Like make your own bag. Like here's the pattern. Okay. And here's where you can find material. It's totally. Yeah. It's definitely not a bad one. Um. And those I'm calling snares in this case, like something that will bring something someone in that takes just very little effort on your part in order to get them engaged. Mm -hmm. um, you'll see a lot of people doing this with YouTube how-to videos, mm -hmm. um, like martial arts gyms. I'll see a lot of that, like how to, how to mm -hmm. self-defense and different things like that, where it's like, hey, great, you get to like actually get a dose of all of this training and like get, see that these guys know what they're talking about before you commit to it. So if you have something where you're like showing people how to make these bags and you have actual patterns up there, or like a little how-to video, or like where to find recycled materials and good people to talk to, mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like, oh, this woman actually knows what she's talking about and her stuff is actually probably really high quality. Like she's like, oh, how to get good recycled material from like different sources and make sure it's like high quality to use for these things. And you can also have a little thing about just um, like upcycling itself and you know how much yeah. like 
what you're actually saving in terms of the environment by yeah. not to going through like the traditional manufacturing process. Yeah. Okay. In terms of just like educating people. Yeah. I had two ideas that might be kind of helpful. Um, yeah. <coughs> I think one of them relates to kind of like a showcase or a highlight of a good client story. And talking, you know, talking with one of your clients who's really proud about the work that you've done for them and it has a lot of sentimental value and then highlighting that on your blog um, as a way of, of giving um, potential clients an idea of, of who's buying these things and if that, that's right for them as well and associating with the sale and saying, oh my God, you know, I've got a grandpa too with some jeans that, you know, and mm-hmm. you know, before they never would have even thought of the idea. Yeah, totally. And then maybe even also that, just yeah. showing, you know, who's wearing my bags as a separate thing altogether. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, the Willamette Week has, you know, like the terrible yeah. fashion trend of the week. You know, it's like stripes this week or, you know. Like oh, right. Yeah. Right, but just, you know, like it, you can just get pictures of, of some of these people with your bags on the streets. And, you know, some girls say, oh my God, I'd love to see that bag on my hip. Next to this other, you know, yeah. whatever. I don't know. Yeah, and that's yeah. a great incentive too for discounts. Like if you want, if you want to charge more and like go in the you know like easily over a hundred dollars for custom mm-hmm. bags range, um, just say like, hey, we'll give you you know like thirty percent off or forty percent off if you agree to do like a little video interview with me afterwards. Um, yeah. Or like, yeah, if you agree to you know, I mean, like do a little photo shoot and take pictures of you like carrying the bag around um, afterwards. Like, yeah, you'll get like twenty percent off. And that, yeah, is a nice little in for them um, being able to justify that and also you getting some good material. Yeah. Oh my god, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> or even if you have friends like in New York City and San Francisco and stuff, you could just give them bags or if they have them anyway, do photo shoots there. So it's like a. Big yeah. yeah. I have friends in San Francisco. Yeah. Like, Totally, yeah. yeah, getting pictures in different cities and testimonials from different cities since you want to go mainly online is totally a good yeah. idea, yeah. You almost want to go over the top and find a place that's doing like filming for a TV show or movie and just give them a bunch of bags to use or something like that for their extras, you know. As seen on Grimm. You know, <laughs> you know I read that Portlandia like is getting a bunch of art from local artists and yeah. Stuff. They get all kinds of submissions. People want to be on that show. Yeah. Some people have been on that show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, awesome. So that was a, yeah, that was actually a good little uh, oh, shit. workshop on some of this pricing stuff. And um, <laughs> that uh, <laughs> that I see. Uh, okay, so um, so I just got a text from Ian. He was watching this live again. Uh, he's communicating via technology. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he was like, your camera went down for a second. Um, that pretty much brings us to the end of our planned time, like up until 8 o'clock. Um, I'll be sticking around for a few more drinks, um, especially just because pricing is one of those like really fun things to talk and nerd out about. There's so many different things that go into it that we only really got to gloss over a lot of it here. Um, but hopefully got your wheels turning, at least in your heads, yeah. for a few different ways to think about pricing and some of the different things it can accomplish. Um, as opposed to just bringing in money and just being like that initial um, cost plus model like I talked about at first. Um, there's a lot of different ways to structure it, obviously. And um, yeah, thank you guys all so much for coming out and uh, once again being a part of the, uh, the cake workshop. It's awesome to be seeing um, familiar faces and kind of seeing, uh, yeah, people come out here and to see new faces as well. Um, yeah, it's been really great and uh, Thanks for your continued support. Uh, hopefully we'll see you guys all next week. And uh, yeah, hopefully you also just get a chance to have drinks with you right now. What um, next this week? Officially, yeah, officially concludes cake. And um, if you haven't donated already too, feel free to um, toss a few bills into the donation box as well. Next week we'll be discussing copywriting a lot of, for you know ad purposes, getting the right words on your paper so people will be more receptive to your message. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that is what we'll be talking about. <laughs> all right. Thanks, guys. <laughs>